assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sisters uh, welcome to another session of knowing allah so uh, mashallah we had our first session and it was really wonderful you know to uh, understand why we should know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is the importance and uh, alhamdulillah uh, and we also did few names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last class so today inshallah we'll continue uh, with uh, sister nuha iqbal uh, Sister Nuha, uh, over to you. Jazakallah khair, Sister Hajra. Um, Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. All praises are for Allah and we send blessings upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I seek refuge in Allah from the outcast shaytan. In the name of Allah, the beneficial, the merciful. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Jazakallah khair for attending our second session of Knowing Allah. And may Allah make this session a source of guidance for all of us. Ameen. Uh, I thought we would start with a quick review of what we went over last class, just to kind of jog our memories a little bit and make sure everyone is on the same page, inshallah. So we can go to the next slide. So last class, we started with learning about why we need to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we looked at five different reasons that we should learn about Allah. And these were the first one being Tawheed, specifically Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, which tells us that a huge component of the foundation of Islam is simply affirming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes are incomparable and unique. So that was the first reason why we need to learn about Allah. Um, the second reason we need to learn about Allah was to what well, is to fully submit in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about how true worship is based off of love, as you can't show um, love to someone that you don't you don't know. So knowing the characteristics of Allah is essential in loving Allah and to worship him sincerely. Uh, and the third reason that we need to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for the purification of the soul. Um, when we learn about Allah, it cleanses us and it removes impurities from our heart and our soul and it removes any negative emotions. And the fourth reason we need to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to increase our faith and open up our hearts. And we talked about how faith is not something that is stagnant, but actually fluctuates over time. And it depends on our heart and the actions of a person. Um, but when we're continually reminded of Allah and his greatness, our hearts open and our faith increases. Uh, and the last reason we need to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because Allah rewards those who seek knowledge for his pleasure. And we looked at a hadith that told us whoever learns the names of Allah and their meanings will enter paradise. So with those five reasons, we know why we are here and why we want to learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So last session, we also talked about the ways that we can apply knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. And the first way that we looked at was by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his attributes. We learned that morning and evening of kar or remembrance um, praises Allah with his names and attributes. And this is extremely important because this is one of the best ways to earn Allah's pleasure simply by praising him. Um, the next way we apply knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives is in our du'as or our supplications. And the proper etiquette of making du'a is to praise Allah with relevant attributes before making our du'a. So for example, when we are seeking forgiveness with Allah, we should say, Oh Allah, you are the all-forgiving, the all-merciful. Forgive me and have mercy on me. So that's how we can use the names in our du'as. And the third way we apply knowledge of Allah in our lives is by reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. So when we contemplate on Allah's power, his magnificence, his greatness, this all brings admiration, love, and devotion in our souls. Um, also reflecting on Allah's attributes such as the first, the eternal, the forgiving, the judge, the sustainer of all existence. All of these names really help in creating a sense of perspective in our lives, and they serve as a reminder that our focus should be on the hereafter and not the this dunya. Uh, and the fourth way that we apply knowledge of Allah in our lives is by memorizing and comprehending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, which we said before is a way to attain paradise. Uh, and the last way we can apply knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is by acting according to his attributes. 
So for example, knowing that Allah is the all-seeing, um, the one who has knowledge and awareness of everything, really um, helps us um, avoid disobeying Allah. So these were the five ways that we can apply knowledge of Allah in our lives and use these classes to further benefit ourselves, inshallah. Um, we can go to the next slide. Okay. Um, after that, we looked at the six names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now this is where I want everyone to try and participate a little bit. Uh, I want to see if anyone remembers what names we looked at last time and what their meanings are. So feel free to type in the chat. If you can't remember, that's okay. We will go over them, but let's just see if anyone's able to remember a few of them, inshallah. Ar-Rahman and the Rahim. Yes. And Sister Hadra said, Ar-Rahman means the most merciful. Yes. And then Ar-Rahim. Yes. Does anyone remember the distinction between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? They both mean uh, the most merciful, but there is a distinction between them, if anyone remembers. Yes, the Ar-Rahman is the merciful to all creation, the merciful for everyone. And Rahim is the most merciful to the believers. Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia. Okay, so those are two of the names. What were, we were still missing one, two, three, four. Four, four names, yes, four names. Allah, yes, the first name, he. Does anyone remember what this means? I was about to say the definition. <laughs> Yes, Allah means who deserves to be worshipped. Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia. And Sister Hajira said, Al-Malik. Yes, what does Al-Malik mean? Yes, Allah also means one God, and that encompasses all of his attributes. That's why Allah is the most, um, is the most, I guess, the name that we use the most, because it encompasses everything. Yes, Sister Hajira said, uh, Malik means the king. Yes, the king, the supreme ruler of everything. Yes, Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia the supreme ruler and the king. Okay, we're missing just two more names. Al-Quddus, yes. What does the Al-Quddus mean? The most pure, yes. Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia. Oh, mashallah, Sister Nadia is on fire today remembering all of those names. Yes, Qudus As-Salam. Yes, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Afia. What does As-Salam mean? Yes, the source of peace. Yes, peace. Jazakallah Khair, Sister Hajira, Sister Nadia. Yes, and that's why we say As-Salamu Alaikum, right? We're asking for Allah's peace to be bestowed on, some, on someone that we're greeting. Yes, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Faiza. Okay, awesome, Alhamdulillah. You guys remembered everything, so I'm really, really happy about that, Alhamdulillah. So just to recap, Allah means the one who deserves to be worshipped, and this name encompasses all of his attributes. Uh, Ar-Rahman is the one who is the most merciful to all of the creation. Ar-Rahim is the one who is most merciful specifically to the believers. And Al-Malik is the sovereign, the supreme ruler of all things, and the king. And Al-Qudus is the most pure, and As-Salam is the source of peace, the ultimate source of peace. Okay, awesome. Let's go to the next slide. So with that, we can now start over the 12, the next 12 names, inshallah. I know it sounds like a lot, but inshallah, we'll be able to do it together. So the first name I want to go over is Al-Mu'min, and this actually means the giver of security. And we find this name of Allah in Surah Hashr, Ayah 23. And actually, Surah Hashr, Ayah 23 and 24 contain most of the names that we're going to go over today. So I'm going to recite these ayahs, and you'll be able to recognize the names as we continue, inshallah. So, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Huwallahu Allahu la ilaha illahu illahu al malik al qut. السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون He is God. There is no God other than Him. The kin, the most pure, the source of peace, the giver of security, the guardian over all, the mighty, the compeller, the great. 
God is far above anything they consider to be his partner. He is God, the creator, the evolver, the fashioner. The best names belong to him. Everything in the heavens and the earth glorify him. He is the mighty, the wise. Okay, so Al-Mu'min actually has different interpretations, but I'm going to go over each of the interpretations because they're actually all very significant. So the first meaning of Al-Mu'min is the giver of security. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Quraysh, Ayah 4, he, it is he who provides them with food against hunger and security against fear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows the blessing of security upon us in so many ways. In Surah Nur, he promises the believers who fear him that he will exchange their fear for security. And he also tells us that in the hereafter, we're going to finally enjoy paradise and our hearts are finally going to feel security and they're finally going to feel at peace. Um, another meaning of Al-Mu'min is the fulfiller of promises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Imran, Ayah 9, indeed, Allah never breaks his promise. So Allah provides his servants with their sustenance and well-being in this world and he forgives all of their sins and in the hereafter and he rewards them for his good deeds and these are all promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for us and he's mentioned in the Quran in several places about the promises that he's made and like no one is going to face injustice or wrong in the hereafter or that everyone will be taken into account these are all the promises he's made and he promises to fulfill them. And he is also the one who fulfills the good expectations we have of him, and he does not disappoint us. So Muhammad Sallallahu narrated that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, I am as my servant thinks of me, so think of me as you will. So that's the second meaning of Al-Mu'min, which is the fulfiller of promises. And the next meaning of Al-Mu'min is the giver of faith. So how does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala do this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us faith by sending us his messengers and by revealing his books to us. And he teaches us through them about his noble names and his attributes of perfection. And you may be a bit confused about how one of Allah's names is Al-Mu'min, but the Quran repeatedly calls the believers Mu'min as well. So how do we differentiate between these two? So in reality, there is no comparison with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything. We can't relate us as mu'min to him as a mu'min at all. They mean very different things. So the word mu'min is actually derived from amana or iman, meaning security or peace. So when it refers to the believer, to us, it means the one who vouches to what is true, the one who attests to what is true. So this means the mu'min, we are the ones who attest that the six pillars of iman are true, which is belief in God, belief in angels, the books, the messengers, the day of judgment, and the divine decree. So these are, um, that is what mu'min means to us. But when mu'min applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means the one who attests himself as being true. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that he is true with his security, he is true with his promise, and he is true with his faith, subhanAllah. So just to recap, al-mu'min means the giver of security, the fulfiller of promises, and the giver of faith. And he confirms that he is true with all of these. He's the true giver of security. He's the true fulfiller of promises. And he is the true giver of faith. Okay, so how can we apply this name in our lives? So just by knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true giver of security and faith, it allows us to put our full trust in him. And our hearts are very reassured with this knowledge. And we trust Allah. We trust that Allah will protect us in whatever we do. Okay, let's go on to the next name, inshallah. So the next name that we will be looking at is Al-Muhaymin, which means the guardian or the watcher slash overseer. So we find this name in that same ayah of Surah Hashr when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is Allah besides whom there is no God, the King, the Holy One, the Peace, the Giver of Security, and the Guardian. So this is actually the only time Al-Muhaymin is mentioned as an attribute of Allah in the Quran, which makes it really special. Um, so Al-Mu'min, like Al-Muhaymin, is a name that has different meanings, but I think guardian is a good umbrella term here. 
So one of the specific meanings of al-muhaymin is the watcher. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watchful over everything that takes place in this universe. And he is aware of all our actions, watching and having our days recorded. And he can see all of it, which is concealed in our hearts, and nothing can be kept a secret from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taghabun, he knows what is in the heavens and the earth. He knows what you conceal and he knows what you reveal. And God knows very well the secrets of the heart. Okay, so that's the first meaning, um, the watcher, the overseer. And another meaning of Al-Muhaymin is the protector. Um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us, he is protecting us too, right? So he's not just watching without interfering. He's always protecting us. And everyone and everything is dependent upon him. And he effortlessly takes care of all of our affairs. And there's actually a really nice quote from Imam Al-Ghazali. Um, he was talking about the name Al-Muhaymin as the guardian. And uh, this is what he said. I'm going to paraphrase a bit here, but this is what he said. He said, everyone who has complete command of a situation, who takes possession and protects it, will be its guardian. Taking command comes down to knowledge, possession of power, and protection. Anyone who unites these meanings is a guardian, but only Allah, great and glorious, joins them absolutely and perfectly. So subhanAllah. So Allah is watchful. Since Allah is watchful of everything, he has true knowledge of everything and he is the absolute protector. So he combines all of these attributes perfectly. So that makes him the only true guardian there is. So how can we apply this name, this beautiful name in our lives? So although the name Al-Muhaymin is very good in producing taqwa or awareness or consciousness of Allah, so that our actions remain good and pleasing to Allah. It's also a good reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with us and protecting us, which really helps give us peace in our hearts. Okay, inshallah, I think we can move to the next slide. Oh, I did forget to mention in the beginning, inshallah, we'll have a session or like a section of this event where we're just going to do all of the questions. So inshallah, if you can save questions till the end, that would be really great, inshallah. Okay, so the next name that we're going to look at is Al-Aziz, which means the mighty. And the name Al-Aziz actually appears 72 times in the Quran, usually with other names mentioned as well. So in Surah Fatir, Allah mentions um, Al-Aziz with Al-Ghafur, the mighty and forgiving. Um, in Surah Baqarah, one, I, I think 121, um, he mentions Al-Aziz with the wise. And in Surah Ibrahim, the first ayah, he mentions the mighty with the praiseworthy. So they're always mentioned in conjunction with different names. And so Allah is the possessor of strength who face, faces no incapacity. And Allah's might really transcends and surpasses all might and power imaginable. And none of us can even aspire to this kind of might. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, all might belongs to Allah. So nothing can stop Allah's will from coming to pass, and no one can oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision. His strength is unconquerable, and his creation cannot harm him in any way, and he is not in need of any of his creation. He is exalted in might, and no one can frustrate his plans, and nothing can escape his ability. So he is might, he is so full of might in every way, shape, and form. So how is Al-Aziz applied in our life? So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted in might and the Almighty brings fear and awe into our hearts, right? So our hearts are really subdued by the might and the power of Allah. And the name Aziz inspires us to obey Allah to the best of our abilities because we know that Allah's might extends to the hereafter and it extends to his punishment as well. So the name Al-Aziz gives a sense of wonder at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do since he can do anything he wants and it also helps us to remember that we should be or we should have do the best best deeds to our abilities because we know that al-aziz um, continues into the hereafter as well we also see uh, the name al-aziz in many duas it's actually in ayatul kursi which is a part of our daily morning and evening adhkar or remembrance and muhammad وسلم, told us whoever recites Ayatul Kursi in the morning will be protected until sunset. And whoever recites it at sunset will be protected until sunrise. So make sure you're reciting Ayatul Kursi every day and try and find the name Al-Aziz in this ayah. Okay, let's move on to the next name, 
which is al-jabbar, which means the compeller. And we also find this name of Allah in ayah 23 from Surah Hashr. And actually the word jabbar in the Quran is used to describe people. Um, when the name al-jabbar describes Allah, it's an attribute of play, praise and glory. But when the word is used to describe humans, it's actually used to rebuke them and censor them of their pride and self-arrogance. Um, for instance, in Surah Ma'idah, um, it is said, they said, O Moses, in this land are a domineering people. So it's always used to describe people in a bad and self-arrogant manner. But what exactly does the compeller mean? So one of the ways that we can think about al-Jabbar is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compels his creatures through creating them in the manner that he wills them to be. We are compelled to accept the form, the shape, and the characteristics that constitute us. So think about all the involuntary actions in our body, like our heart beating, our blood circulating, our nerve cells firing, and the mysterious working of the brain. And these are all compelled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power in ways that we can understand and in ways that we're not even aware of. And there are so many aspects of our lives, like falling asleep, waking up, being alert or absent-minded. These are not entirely up to our own decisions. And a man named Muhammad bin Kaab actually said, the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called a compeller is because he compels creation to be as he wishes. So that is one of the meanings of uh, al-Jabbar. And another connotation of the word al-Jabbar is the one who resets or restores something to its full state. So those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with piety, devotion, and submission um, find that their um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets their hearts right with certainty of faith, humility, and sublime meaning. So how can we apply this beautiful name in our lives? So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the compeller encourages us to seek comfort in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and will. Ultimately, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decisions will prevail no matter what, since he can compel what he wants to be. So Al-Jabbar really helps us submit to Allah's will and find harmony with that. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So the next name that we are going to look at is Al-Mutakabbir, which means the great or the supreme. So the name Al-Mutakabbir actually appears six times in the Quran, including the Surah Hashir Ayah that we're now familiar with. Um, so when we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, uh, his greatness really encompasses so many different things. He is great in his essence, his attributes, his names, and his actions. And this is why we proclaim Allahu Akbar, uh, Allah is the greatest in all of our prayers. So Allah is truly the supreme, and he is transcendent above every deficiency that is inherent in us. He is exalted in glory, and he is the one who, whom every overbearing tyrant on earth has to ultimately bow to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone possesses such greatness. Any created being who aspires to this kind of greatness is considered arrogant. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, grandeur is my cloak and greatness is my robe. Whoever seeks to rival me in either, I shall consign to the fire, subhanAllah. And we have seen people transgress others. We've seen powerful people hurting the weak, which always happens with tyrants who have no faith faith in God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved artifacts from civilizations like the pharaohs, Caesars, and others like them who had leaders who swore that they were the greatest. And what empire still stands that honors and worships and praises these people daily, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved them for us to remind us that he alone possesses supreme greatness and they are just simply arrogant people. Okay, so how can we apply this name in our lives? So understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is great, it really expands, um, this real, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness really expands farther than we can understand really, and it really humbles us and fills us with wonder of our Lord. And we should actually consider Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's words. He said, no one shall enter paradise whose heart contains an Adam's weight of arrogance. So we have to understand that humility is a really important prerequisite for Jannah. And if anyone has less knowledge, less wealth, fame, or prestige than you, and you find yourself being arrogant, 
really think about the vastness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness and think about how Allah has given you these blessings. Think about the arrogant leaders who came before us and think about if you want to associate yourself with them. We are really nothing without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of your capabilities, all of our capabilities came by his hand and came by his greatness. So we need to strive to really remain humble so that we all may enter Jannah, inshallah. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. And don't worry, I'm going to um, wrap up each names as we move on. So we are going to all be on the same page before we move on to the next six names as well, inshallah. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is Al-Khaliq, which means the creator. So the name Al-Khaliq actually appears in the Quran 11 times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Zumar, Allah is the creator of all things. So the name Al-Khaliq is the one who creates and brings something into existence out of nothing. But it's not just random creation. It's very precise, very planned, and very calculated creation. So to put things into perspective about the majestic creation of Allah, let's look at like a few examples. So in Surah Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then we develop the sperm drop into a clinging clot of blood, then develop the clot into a lump of flesh, then develop the lump into bones, then clothe the, the bones with flesh, then we brought it into being as a new creation. So blessed is Allah, the blessed of creators. SubhanAllah, this ayah blows me away every single time I read it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how he is the best of the creators and how his creation is so majestic and every single step is very carefully planned. And what about if we just look up at the sky? We stare off into the vastness of space and the billions of galaxies that contain billions of stars. These are all just over our, he our heads. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the universe, the galaxies, the earth out of nothing. He said be and all of this came to be. And there is so much that he has created that we cannot even see and we don't even know about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Haqqa, but no, I swear by all that you see and all by that you do not see. And he also says in Surah Waqiyah, nay, I swear by the places of the stars and verily that is a tremendous oath, if only you knew. SubhanAllah. So Allah is also the Al-Khalaq. So this is really different from Al-Khaliq. Al-Khalaq means he is the perpetual creator. And there are so many things that are yet to be brought into existence. So Allah is perpetually, perpetually creating as well. So how can we apply this name, the creator, in our lives? So the best way to apply this name in our lives is to just reflect on Allah's creation. When we reflect on Allah's creation, it tells us about the greatness of Allah and how he has created everything in perfect harmony. So just going on a walk and thinking about the world around us really brings peace into our hearts and fortifies our faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Imran, there truly are signs in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the night and day for those with understanding. Those who remember Allah standing and sitting down and lying down, who reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth saying, our Lord, you have not created this without purpose. Glory be to you. So protect us from the torment of the fire. SubhanAllah. So just by reflecting on Allah's creation, we will be in awe of Allah as a creator. And it really fills our hearts with faith. SubhanAllah. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So we have gone over six names so far, and we have another six more to go. Uh, I know that was a lot of information. So let's just recap what we've learned so far. Um, does anyone want to try and tell me, give a name and a meaning of what we went over today? If you can, if not, then I will go over them again. But if you're able to, feel free to type it in the chat. Any of the names that we just learned. Yes, al mumin that was the first name that we learned. The giver of faith. Yes, the giver of faith, the giver of security, and the fulfiller of promises. Yes. And the next name was al Muhaymin. al Muhaymin. yeah. I was about to say what somebody wrote. <laughs> no, it's okay. The guardian and the watch watcher. Yes, al Muhaymin <laughs> means the guardian and the watcher. Jazakallah khair. And Jazakallah khair, Sister Aisha. Um, yes, Sister Hajar, al Mu'min, the giver of faith, security, and the fuller of promises. Yes, Al-Aziz, Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia. Al-Aziz means the mighty. Jazakallah khair, Sister Alicia. Yes, so that was the first three names. 
Does anyone remember the last three names that we went over? Al Jabbar, yes. Jazakallah khair, Sister Afia. What does Al Jabbar mean? The one that's praiseworthy and glorious? I think so. Yes, the compeller. Yes, Al Jabbar means the compeller, the one who compels everything to be as it is. Yes, Jazakallah khair. Yes, Al Khaliq, the creator, and Al Khalaq, the perpetual creator. Jazakallah khair, Sister Nadia and Sister Aisha. There's one more left, if anyone remembers it. Yes, Al Mutakabir, Jazakallah khair, Sister Afia. And what does Al Mutakabir mean? The Supreme? Yes, Jazakallah khair, the Supreme and the Great. Okay, mashallah, alhamdulillah, I feel really happy, alhamdulillah, everyone remembers the name, so that's really good, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless all of you. Okay, so that means we're, we're ready to move on to the next six names of Allah, inshallah. So I've given them here, so we can just quickly read this over. So al-mu'min is the giver of security, the giver of faith, and the fulfiller of promises. Al-muhayman is the guardian, the watcher, the overseer of everything. Al-aziz is the mighty, al-jabbar is the compeller. Al Mutakabir is the great and supreme, and Al Khaliq is the creator, and Al Khalaq is the perpetual creator. Okay, Jazakallah khair, everyone. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So, the next names that we are going to be looking at is Al Bari and Al Musawir. And we're going to learn these names together because they're often found together in the Quran and their, name, their meanings are quite similar as well. So, Al Bari means the evolver while al musawwar means the fashioner okay so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah hashr um allah says he is allah the creator the evolver the fashioner his are the most excellent names whatever is in the heavens and the earth declares his glory and he is the mighty the wise so you may be wondering what's what's the difference between the creator the evolver and the fashioner Okay, so all of these words actually describe Allah's absolute power of creation, but in slightly different ways. So al-bari means the evolver. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates changes and provides circumstances according to his wish and will. And he allows for his creation to evolve into what he wants it to become. And we see this just in nature. We see so many species evolve over time. Think about how many different species of birds there are now. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided the circumstances for this creation. So that's how al-bari works. Uh, and the next name is al-musawwir is the fashioner. So this, uh, this is the one who gives unique form and appearance to all of his creatures and gives unique characteristics. So when you look around, there are so many different designs in nature, in plants, in animals, in people. Even two identical twins have completely different personalities and differences down to their fingertips. So everything has unique shape, unique shape color, form, and design. Okay. So al-bari is the evolver, and al-musawwir means the fashioner. Okay. So how can we apply these names in our lives? So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the evolver and the designer of all things really steers us toward worship of the only creator, right? Because Allah is the only creator and inventor, and he alone deserves all of the praises bestowed on us. And we often overlook the simple blessings in life, such as our existence, our shape, our abilities, uh, but with the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best creator, really allows us to be more attentive to the things that we should be thankful for. And with this renewed attentiveness comes renewed love and faith for the one who has given us and bestowed upon all of us. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide, inshallah. So the next name we will be looking at is Al-Ghafoor, which means the most forgiving. So Al-Ghafoor and derivations of Al-Ghafoor actually occur 98 times in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr, announce, O Muhammad, to my slaves that verily I am the forgiving, the merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also calls the polytheists and the transgressors to seek forgiveness. He says in Surah Zumar, O my servants who have transgressed against their souls, do not despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, for Allah forgives all sins. He is forgiving, most merciful. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the doors of his mercy are wide open and he forgives all sins without exception. He's willing to forgive even polytheism and unbelief as long as the perpetrator renounces such falsehoods and really sincerely repents. Okay, so Allah's forgiveness really has no bounds at all. In a hadith, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O child of Adam, however much you beg me and place your hopes in me, I will forgive you without any reservation. O child of Adam, if you have sins piling up to the clouds, then ask me for my forgiveness. I will forgive you without any reservation. O child of Adam, if you come to me with enough mistakes to fill the earth and meet me without associating any partner with me, I will come to you with enough forgiveness to fill the earth. SubhanAllah, I really love this. Um, hadith so much that always brings tears to my eyes subhanAllah so Allah has made it that the nature of the human beings is to make mistakes and this is really unavoidable that we're going to make mistakes so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really encourages us to seek his forgiveness and he promises us his forgiveness so sometimes I think we talked about this last time but sometimes we find ourselves thinking negatively like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't forgive me or I've done too many bad deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala probably hate me. And these are all thoughts from shaitan. So Allah told us again and again that his forgiveness is limitless. So if you find yourself thinking like this, remember that these thoughts are from shaitan and think of this beautiful hadith that we talked about. Another hadith is that Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, by him in whose hand is my life. If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you with people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah and he would have pardoned them. SubhanAllah. So Allah tells us that if we didn't sin, he would replace us with people who do sin and who ask for forgiveness. That is how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to seek forgiveness. So don't hesitate in asking Allah. He is the most forgiving. He is the al Ghafur. Okay. So how can we apply this name in our life? So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all forgiving really fills our hearts with love for Allah, right? We should never, we should strive to seek Allah's forgiveness and we should always hope for that forgiveness. Despite whatever sins we've committed in the past, we really should never give up hope and we should never become depressed over our shortcomings. Rather, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance every day. And we should also show forgiveness to others around us because we know as Muslims how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves forgiveness. So wanting Allah's forgiveness for ourselves really inspires us to show forgiveness to others for their shortcomings as well. Okay, so inshallah, I think we can move to the next name. So the next name I want to talk about is Al-Qahar, which means the subduer. So some people translate this name as the prevailer as well as he prevails over everything. So what exactly does the subduer mean? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything subdued and submissive because nothing occurs without what Allah has allowed and everything is directly subjected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and will. And we can see it in this world, how Allah prevails and governs all of our affairs, but it will be even more evident in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hijr, the day where they will come, where they will all come forth, not a single thing concerning them is hidden from Allah. Whose is the dominion of this day? It is Allah's, the one, the subduer of all. So in this verse, Allah asks rhetorically, um, whose is the dominion of this day? But in the hereafter, there will be no question in anyone's mind that everything and everyone in existence is subjected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dominion. There will be no disputes on that day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subdues subdues everyone's doubts and arguments in the worldly life with his clear signs and in the hereafter he's going to subdue them with his judgment while everyone just waits and looks forward so another connotation is of al-qahar is that he subdues the arguments of those that deny him so a scientist who looks at the universe in depth or a farmer who looks at how seeds sprout and grow in the soil or a bedouin who witnesses the rain and sees the desert bloom Allah has placed signs that really attest to his existence and his lordship. And with signs like these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really subdues all doubts of people and really um, inspires our hearts to faith, right? So how can we apply this name in our lives? So 
When we remember that Al-Qahar, the subduer and the prevailer is with us, our hearts are really assured that the most powerful is with us. So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a subduer, it really softens our hearts. Our hearts are subdued and they're in peace, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prevailing and that nothing can happen except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really subdues all of our affairs, just like how he subdued Fir'aun when he stood against Prophet Musa, or how he subdued Jalut when Prophet Dawood fought, fought against him and won, right? So Allah is the best of subduers and he prevails over everything. Nothing can overpower him, overpower him. So our hearts really find peace knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subdues all of our affairs, okay? So I think we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so the next name that we are going to look at is Al-Wahhab, which means the bestower. So in Surah Salaad, Prophet Sulaiman calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, My Lord, forgive me and bestow on me a kingdom such as shall not belong to anyone after me. You are the bestower. So our lives are actually just a continuous succession of Allah's gifts. So, so many of us fail to see that we are receiving Allah's bounty in ways that we didn't even think of. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that we will never be able to count all of the blessings he has bestowed upon us since they're innumerable. He says in Surah Ibrahim, if you were to count Allah's favors, you would not be able to number them. Most surely humanity is very unjust, very ungrateful. So just to put things into perspective, let's just think of the human body. So there are approximately 100 trillion cells in the human body. So what does that mean? There are 100 trillion blessings in the human body because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings manifest themselves within each one of those cells in innumerable ways. So if you've studied biology, you know about the complex reactions that occur in each of the cells and how numerous functions in cells are happening simultaneously. So if you try to calculate the number of reactions and processes occurring in each cell and take that to a magnitude of 100 trillion, we can't even comprehend the blessings that we're receiving each second. And that's just the human body at a cellular level. There are so many other blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows on us, right? Your family, your health, your home, your education, your food, your clothes, the fact that he made us Muslims, and so many other things. And even if we entertain the idea that blessings, that the blessings that Allah bestows upon us has is some finite number, that number would not even account for all of the misfortunes that Allah withholds from us and protects us and how he protects us, right? So how can we apply Al-Wahhab, the name in our life? So knowing that Allah is the true bestower really fills our hearts with love for him. And we are in awe of the kindness and the lovingness of Allah. We should really take our time to focus on the many blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us, and we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. And we should turn to Allah in prayer and thank him in sujood. So every time you remember the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you, thank the Al-Wahhab. Okay, and the last name that we're going to be going over is Ar-Razaq, which means the provider. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, the recompense of your Lord is best, and he is the best of providers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides and sustains the whole creation. He is not in need of anyone from or anything from anyone, but everyone is in need of him and need of provision from him. So think about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for the fetus in the womb by the umbilical cord, or how he provides for the snake in its home, or the bird in its nest, or the fish in the sea, or how he provides for the um, crocodile by bringing down large animals in its powerful jaws, and how he provides for the small bird which enters the crocodile's mouth and picks food between its teeth while this crocodile sits complacently, because Allah is truly the best of providers. And there's actually two kinds of sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. So the first kind of sustenance is a general sustenance. And this is the sustenance that Allah provides for everyone, whether they're righteous or wicked or whether they believe in him or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, there is not a beast on earth, but its sustenance depends on Allah. So Allah really provides for everyone. 
And the second kind of sustenance is that is a very special sustenance. And this is the sustenance or the provision of faith. The one who receives faith is inclined to the worship of Allah and to know him and to obey him and to attain his pleasure. So Allah has provided faith and contentment and spiritual awareness in our hearts, right? And truly that's the best thing that Allah can provide for us is a heart that's contented or contented. So how can we apply uh, the name ar razaq in our lives? So the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, the ears that we hear with, the eyes that li allow us to see, the minds that we reason with, and the hearts by which we feel. These are all enjoyments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us, whether we realize it or not. And knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the continual provider really allows us to put all of our reliance and trust in Allah in all matters of life because he is the only true provider and he's the only one that can truly take care of us, right? Okay, so alhamdulillah, I think we'll go to the next slide. So that was, we learned 12 new names today. And I know it was a lot of information, but we did it, alhamdulillah. So let's go over the last, I think, six names that we learned so that it really sticks with us. So can anyone remember um, some of the last names that we learned today? The last six names. Al-Bari was the first one, right? Yes, And al Mustawir because they were similar, you said. Yes, Al-Bari and Mustawir, yes, they are similar. Do you know what they mean or what the difference is between them? Uh, uh, I know Mustawir is fashioner mm -hmm. and yes. Bari is, I think, evolver. I yes, <laughs> mashallah, yes. Al-Bari is the evolver and Mustawir is the fashioner, mashallah. Good memory. What else in the comments? Nadia said al ghafar Yes, al qahar Yes, Sister Hajar said al bari means the evolver. And Sister Nadia said al ghafar means the forgiver. Yes. Yes. Um, so we went over al bari Musawar, al ghafur um, al qahar Yes, Sister I said al qahar mashallah. Does anyone remember what al qahar means? Yes, al prevailing. Yes, Jazakallah khair, Sister Aisha. Al-Wahhab, what does Al-Wahhab mean? Sister Hajra said Al-Razaq, yes, Al-Wahhab means the bestower. So Al-Razaq, yes, what does Al-Razaq mean? Provider, yes, Jazakallah khair, Sister Afia. Al-Razaq means the best provider. And then we had, um, I think that was all of the names, right? We went over all of them? Yes, okay. So let's click on the slide. So yeah, we went over all of these. Al-Bari, Al-Musawwir, Al-Ghafur, Al-Qahar, Al-Wahhab, and Al-Razaq. Okay, let's go to the next slide. MashaAllah, so these were the 12 new names that we went over today, Alhamdulillah. So just to recap, let's just quickly read through this. So Al-Mu'min is the giver of security. Al Muhaymin is the guardian, the one who watches everything. Al Aziz is the mighty, the almighty. Al Jabbar is the compeller. Al Mutakabir is the great. Al Khaliq is the creator. Al Bari is the evolver. Al Musawir means the fashioner. Al Ghafur is the most forgiving. Al Qahar is the subduer. Al Wahhab is the bestower. And Al Razaq is the best provider. Okay, mashallah. So up till now, I think we've learned, we learned six last class. So we've learned 18 names so far. Alhamdulillah, that's really, really good. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our session today. Um, I'll now open the floor for any questions, any comments, or any clarifications. So feel free to type in the chat. I know there were some questions, um, but if you want to retype them, that would be amazing. But yeah, alhamdulillah. Zakallah khair, Sister Nuha, that was amazing, mashallah. Uh, I think Sister Afia had asked the difference between al khalaq and Khaliq. So um, I had uh, typed the answer there. al khaliq is the creator who creates everything from nothing. Uh, Subhanallah. And al khalaq um, is the superlative, like the perpetual creator, the continuous creator. So because... Um, now we see so many things, so many people, but even after we die, there'll be so many more people to come, so many more creations to come. So al khalaq is the perpetual creator, the continuous creator. Um, and uh, 
I love the names that you explained uh, about Al Bari and Al Musawir because um, with the evolution happening, uh, lots of um, uh, people they get confused with um, oh um, because the science talks about evolution and but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given the name Al Bari that means the evolver who evolves things. You know, he creates the material. And then he evolves uh, things from the material that he has created, uh, very well planned uh, with all the laws of nature and with all the information he guides through and evolves things. And then everything is so different from uh, other, even in the same species of animals or insects or uh, plants, we see uh, so much of differences, so much of color, so much of variety, and he is al-Musawir. So subhanAllah, uh, that was a wonderful, uh, mashallah, class, and uh, I got to learn so much as well. Uh, mashallah, jazakallah, khayf, uh, Any questions that you have, sisters, please, um, uh, it's open to, you know, open for everyone. Uh, Sister Zakia, would you like to add something to this, inshallah? No, oh, mashallah, Noha did a very good job. It was so beautiful. And yeah, there were times then <laughs> that we all got teared up because, you know, Allah is so close to us and, you know, we don't realize all these names, you know, you know, we were made to worship Allah, right? We all have that in us. He made it so that we like to know about Allah because this is the one that we have. We, it's like inbred in us, you know, our fitra. So we want to know about Allah, somebody we already love so much. So, you know, actually sinning and going against is, it, Allah has already made it hard. So we go against our nature to sin sometimes, you know, because it's not inside us. And to know him, you get this immense peace and immense, I don't know, this just happiness because, you know, somebody we are made to love is what we are talking about in this class. So it, it just it's just immense happiness and immense um, peace and contentment that we feel when we hear about Allah's names and mashallah, Noah was doing such a good job. Amazing. Mashallah. May Allah reward you. May Allah protect you. And, you know, may Allah keep you on the straight path, sister Noah. Um, uh, and yeah, just amazing. Mashallah. And uh, it's just, that's why I always, I, I love learning about Allah, even though, you know, we've done it so many times, we forget this subhanAllah, you know, uh, we are insan, the word insan, Insan means the one who forgets. And uh, it, subhanAllah, I'm so happy that Sister Noah has taken this up and doing such a wonderful job. And uh, may Allah reward all of you for coming and, you know, taking your time out on a very busy Saturday morning, um, not morning, it's different times in different areas. It's an afternoon for me, evening, sorry for me, but I don't know if it's uh, what different times. But Alhamdulillah, everybody made an effort. May Allah reward you for coming. And may Allah reward the organizers who gave us this opportunity to come and do this for you guys. And Alhamdulillah, so Allah made it possible. It was like a dream and it's coming true, mashallah. <laughs> That's it, Sister Hazar. I talk too much anyways. It's so wonderful to have you, mashallah. Uh, sisters, if there are no questions, then we can wrap it up here because it's almost time. Time's up now. Alhamdulillah. Oh, uh, Sister Aisha is asking, is there a group chat? Um, uh, Sister Aisha, we have a reverse WhatsApp group as well. Um, let me see. I don't know how to put up the link here. Um, uh, if you are registered, inshallah, we can send you the details. Uh, she can join our Embrace group. We have Aisha, Sister Aisha. We have a group called Embrace Sisters. And you can always join us. If you can send the number, we can... Uh, write it down right now and we can join you and we do chat in that group um, I okay i'll take down her number yeah yes i'll take down her number it's, oh it went sorry hajra did you take it down? i got it. you got it okay it's an american number yeah inshallah we'll join you in our group any anything else anybody has Oh, Sunday morning. Okay, for us, we are still on a Saturday. You're going too ahead, Namira, Sister Namira. You're too fast for us. <laughs> oh, Kosser wants okay, to join. Okay, okay. Really, uh, yeah, I like some comments. Uh, it's actually a pleasure to listen to you all and feels like uh, let me listen it like the whole time, right? I mean, even you, everybody. 
But I'll just, just like to uh, say one beautiful thing that uh, Subhanallah Subhanahu Taala, his attributes are so much balanced. Like in one time he's saying that he's Al Mutakabir, Al Jabbar, like you know Al Kahar. He, he he can you know like catch anybody and you know like there, there's a compelling uh, factor of his attribute, right? And in the other hand, it's like he's so merciful and he's so forgiver. And and this is such a beautiful balance in um, uh, the the uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's you know, so this is something I, I found really beautiful, the balance. That's very true, Sister Afia. Was it Sister Afia? That's a very good uh, observation, Mashallah. Yeah, there's so there everything is so balanced about it. Even though all the names are in like superlative degrees he's the all powerful he's the all provider he's the best creator you know everything in the superlative degree yeah but yeah they're still very balanced subhanallah but you know uh, uh, there is a saying of allah, allah that i uh, make even though he can punish but he has made his uh, his mercy overtake his punishment so he always his mercy is Subhanallah, like nobody, we cannot even imagine how merciful he is towards us. So Subhanallah, that's also another very important part of just like how balanced he is. But in some times, like his mercy takes over his punishment because we constantly sin. But Alhamdulillah, he delays our punishment. He gives us so many chances. He shows us so many signs to stop us from doing wrong. And then if, you know, if it's, even the punishment is, is like um, a mercy because, you know, it stops us from going even further into whatever sin we are doing. So everything about him is just awesome. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Yes, alhamdulillah. <laughs> the time is almost up, but I'll just add like uh, one more point. Is alhamdulillah, the balance is there. And... Go ahead. Oh, I, your voice got cut off, I think. Sister Afia? Oh, I think she got muted. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Sister Afia? We can't hear you. Um, okay, the, the sorry, the mic was muted. I mean, the sh shaitan, we, we were uh, like discussing last time about how the shaitan is able to trick us, right? The the moment we, we focus on the attributes of Allah, it actually wards away all kind of uh, traps from shaitan because either he will uh, try to entrap us like, okay, you have done so many sins now, what you will do to your sins, you know? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say he's all forgiving or he will uh, let us for, forget us. Allah and fall on something else. So yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he's all seeing, all compiler. He can, you know. So if we focus only on Allah's attribute and we perceive it like uh, the imagine it and perceive it in ourselves, I think uh, we're gonna be safe from much of the traps of shaitan. Uh, I guess, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, you know, when in the beginning of the uh, session she did one of the purpose is to make our faith be stronger. So we get stronger when we know. You know, knowledge always makes us more stronger. You know, how this Islamophobia is going on because they don't know us. Once they got, get to know us, the hatred becomes less knowledge. With knowledge comes power, right? Same thing with you. Like you, if we have knowledge of Allah, then of course the power of shaitan is weaker on us. Yeah, very good observation, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. I think I'm taking too much time. Sister Hajra, you can end it. Unless somebody else has... Anything else to say? Uh, Sister Afia, mashallah, always makes such good um, observation, mashallah. See any more questions in the group chat? Sisters, if you have any questions, let us know. Or if you think about it later as well, uh, you can always uh, message us or email us, uh, inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair for attending. It was a wonderful session, a beautiful reminder for all of us. Um, including me first and then uh, for all of you. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept our effort and may Allah strengthen the iman of all of us and of our youth and of our children and may Allah preserve them, protect them and keep them steadfast on the path of iman. Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rab. Jazakallah, uh, khair sisters. And um, no questions still. So then um, I think um, I will end it here with a small dua. Uh, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام جزاك الله وعليكم السلام